What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming at you with a Princess Connect video. So I've got eight tips that are pretty cool to know, but not exactly game breaking, you know? I don't wanna lie, it's not gonna blow your mind. Without further ado, let's just get into it. Number one, the purchase mana one time daily quest. It's not worth it if you're only looking for EXP. So a refresh actually costs 40 gems for 120 stamina, which equals 120 EXP, right? But purchasing the mana costs 10 gems for 20 EXP from the daily. Though you do get 12k minimum mana, 2 skip tickets, and a 20% chance at a divine amulet. So that puts the EXP ratio at 120 to 40 versus 20 to 10, aka 3 to 1 versus 2 to 1. From these numbers, if you're looking just for EXP, then refills are the way to go. However, the question now is, would you pay 10 gems for 12k mana, 2 skip tickets, and a 20% chance at a divine amulet? I personally think it's an okay buy and not really making a mistake. Uh, it's 10 gems is is like what a 15th of a roll tip number two so you can actually restart a floor if you're getting screwed up in the dungeon so for example I'm gonna go fight this uh, elder tyrant uh, well everyone is dead okay so <laughs> So what you can actually do is, if you're actually losing and you realize you're losing whilst you're fighting in the floor, you can actually just click retreat and it will take you back out to before you actually went into the dungeon. So what that means is that your team's HP and TP will be restored back to what you had before then. What this means really is that you can have unlimited tries on the floor. Three, gifting your characters. You can fast track your bond level using gifts. You can actually give them gifts in the guild house here. And if you give them gifts, you can actually level their bond levels faster. So. My Makoto is already at level 6 because I've been spamming her with gifts. Just remember that 1 stars, 2 stars, and 3 stars all have different bond level caps, so you can see my Yukari is actually already maxed. So I would suggest actually not throwing your gifts at the 1 stars, and probably prioritize your 3 stars because they will take a lot longer to cap out. Number 4, consider buying out the equipment in the bonus shop. So there's actually a surprising amount of RNG involved in acquiring equipment in this game. So I've actually been buying out the equipment from the bonus shop, which I unfortunately can't show you here, because I just want to progress faster. So I think buying it out with a little bit of mana is not overly, is not really bad, uh, especially if it helps you progress. Though you do have to unlock the bonus shop, so you have to push far enough into the story. Number five, link your precon account to your Crunchyrolls account. So if I click this account link, and then this account link here, you can actually link to a Crunchyroll's game account. And the reason you want to do this is because not only does it protect your account from being lost, but you also actually get 2k gems in the achievements. So that's exactly what it sounds like. It's free gems, that's it. You could definitely incorporate this into your rerolling strategy if you're actually still going at it. Yeah, but this one's not really obvious, so I thought I'd call it out here. If you're stuck on progression, then consider refining your gear. It really does not cost much and you get a partial refund when you rank up. I think in the long run, it's pretty okay, it's fine. Especially because it enables you to farm better things faster, right? So sometimes you just gotta spend money to make money. Number seven, don't forget to upgrade your guild house. Just remember that there are actually four structures because this lady at the desk can also be upgraded, but it's just not immediately obvious when you can upgrade them, right? See, there's four different furnitures. I guess this is more as a gentle reminder because there's no actually like any indicators or like an upgrade available kind of thing. So it's easy to miss. So again, remember every 10 levels, so level one, level 10, level 20, level 30 blah blah you actually get you can actually upgrade your furnitures all of them in the long run it adds up so don't forget lucky last number eight so there are actually stats that are tied to your character stories so if you're looking for some upgrades just remember to check those ones out um, this one does seem a little bit obvious but uh, it doesn't actually say anything out here so uh, like it may be obvious to some but I thought I'd just call it out just in case right so if you click in you can actually see a stat boost bonus here right so each stage is actually giving you this one itself gave me 300 HP to my Pekarin, which is pretty good. But yeah, that brings me to the end of my video. So I hope these tips helped you out. Um, if they did, consider leaving a like, comment, and a subscribe. If not, I don't know. I, I guess I'll, I'll try better next time. But with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Bye-bye.